United We Rise is a new Black-led initiative that aims to mobilize the Black community to end HIV. Welcome to the United We Rise Every Black Body Live series. When I came into this field, um, birthed about 20 years ago, I entered the field when Black leadership was prominent. Mm -hmm. I mean, there was black gay men everywhere, black gay men organizations. You know, I there were there were people that I knew who led this fight, who who looked like the fight. I mean, we were we were all in it together. But as time went on and as they started changing methods and approaches to HIV, black folks got pushed out. It, and it became obvious that our organizations weren't a part of it. You didn't see as many black led organizations or black gay men led organizations. And so I think that there, I, I commend the people who, who, who created this initiative or who led this initiative to say that we have to become a part of this again because we have been pushed out. And it was an obvious push out, you know, in my eyes. You know, I went to a meeting, it had to be 2009. And I hadn't been in HIV for like a couple of years. And when I got to the meeting, it was a CDC meeting, and I was sitting there and they were talking about just different things, but none of the language that they were using sounded like community-based language. Also, I noticed that the people who I worked with for years, they weren't in the room. There were hospitals and there were clinics and they were talking about medical models. And there, all of a sudden I realized that it had changed and we were not a part of the change, but yet we're still being impacted by HIV. And as we've learned over the years, if we're not a part of our own fight, then we'll get left behind. It'll, get, it'll change, it'll shift away from our knees and it'll go to someone else. We have to make sure that you know, the communities that we bring into this work, especially from a leadership perspective, mm -hmm. are supported in a way to that they can continue the work needed to continue to, to move that pipeline forward and, and build that leadership necessary to obtain a critical mass of change agents working to end this epidemic across this country. My decision is more about freedom and having the ability to speak to the issues in the way that I feel like I need to speak to the issues as opposed to having to craft a message and then water it down, water it down so that it'll be acceptable by another community. And so my take on entrepreneurship has been, I'm going in this direction because I know the population that I'm working with and they look like me and I know the needs of my community. And so that is where, that's why I've always kind of pushed toward entrepreneurship because um, that freedom is what means the most to me. Right. Everyone that works with me know that for me, I don't just lead from the top and say, hey, team member, here we go. Like anything that we do, I need and want to be there because that's actually the most fulfilling and rejuvenating part of it for me. To be able to go out when we do our five point initiatives and be out in the community, to be able to see our participants when they come in. And so for me, it's, it's constantly figuring out how do I consistently prioritize my why because if not my why it's not sustainable whatever space you get into you're always second guessing yourself am I mm -hmm. good as anybody else or do I, I need to do a little bit better um, just so I can get the same treatment or get the same opportunity as other people mm -hmm. and then also um, being that I am from a marginalized community mm -hmm. um, I see day to day like what happens to individuals like me and so i always feel so blessed and so lucky that my life has changed 360 and i'm in a space now that i can sit on the panel tonight and talk about it when i've had friends who may have been murdered or i still have friends who may be active in addiction or friends who may still be standing on the street corners trying to make money and knowing that i once was there in my community, we have partnered with a um, salon owner and mm -hmm. she opened up her beauty salon for us to come in to educate people about HIV and mm -hmm. business. And we, we wanted to make it a safe space where people could come and feel free and mm -hmm. talk because a lot, as much as you see a, in Miami, Miami, Florida, you see a HIV sign on every corner. Mm -hmm. Women are still unbothered that HIV is out here. 
And what goes hand in hand with this, like with United We Rise, is that community really drives that, right? People who are most impacted. That, you know, me as a Black person living in HA, uh, living in Los Angeles, um, I have my own ideas around what policy is important for us here, but that's different policy recommendations, different policy strategies in Alabama, in New York, in DC, and that people who are closest to the problem have the best solutions. And that same thing for policy. You don't just constrict that to policies that are just about HIV, because we know what actually drives HIV is animated by a lot of things that may not have anything to do with HIV, right? It's about housing policy. It's about education policy. It's about health policy writ large. It's a way to hold officials, hold our government officials, both elected and appointed, accountable. Did you achieve this policy? Are you carrying out the policy? Is it having the intended effect? So it's a measure of how we can hold uh, our public officials accountable for how they are responding to HIV. I'm able to work with students who are black and or queer and I'm able to be a representation to them of what freedom looks like, what creative creativity looks like through a vessel that is both black and queer. And that is such an incredible opportunity because not only am I able to engage with community, but I'm also able to invest in the future. As a mother, something that has been important to me is breaking generational, generational cycles where our children only know one facet, one aspect of us, and then they have to learn the rest of the world through other women's examples, you know? And um, so it was really important to me, not just to bring my authentic self publicly, mm -hmm. but to my to, to, to my children. It's like, this: I am a woman, and yes, I am your mother, but I am also right. all of these other things. Mm -hmm. So when you start thinking about how you wanna grow up, you're gonna be my daughter, and you're gonna be all these other things too, you know? And so giving giving my children space to grow up and be unashamed of the things that they work hard for and that they're proud of. All of the ways and all of the things that a person would describe themselves. Um, I am now, I guess I am considered an elder. And as a trans woman, as a trans person, as a black woman, as a woman, um, we know that ageism is part of it. And an elder is one of those things I used to describe myself. I'm 50 years old. I'm 50. And there was a time when you didn't see trans women living to 50. And unfortunately, they're not a they're not enough of us that make it to 50 now. Um, I, I am a black woman. I describe myself as black and as a woman and a woman of a certain age and gainfully employed, relatively intelligent um, and kind of cute, if I might add. Yes! Those things are part of my identity. They're part of what makes me. Riskier things, or are there other factors? Absolutely not. I wish I could say to you we were having more sex or wilder sex. No, that is a myth that the media continues to portray. You don't care because you already know that your uncle He's hidden in a closet. He's hiding in a closet. You already know what's going on. So you're like, you have no place to tell me how I should be or who I should be. So I'm just going to be who I am. We are living through some really challenging times. So we want to take this time to create community and love and peace and positivity. Um, so I ask you all, just take a deep breath. And exhale. Let's do one more. Inhale and exhale.